Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 62. And I normally don't have anything to say about the number or like anything really relevant in the beginning, but this time I really don't. Um, how about you, Lily? Um, I mean, I, I like a good even number, so I feel like we could just leave it at that. <laughs> 62. Appreciate that commentary. Let's just step right into it because last episode, we have we have some things to talk about. I mean, that's an understatement, right? I feel like literally half of this episode is going to be us talking about last episode. Well, we have some other topics too, but um, we do want to address, uh, go back to last, I was going to say last week, but a couple days ago, the topic of Jonah Hill and the text being leaked between him and his ex-girlfriend, Sarah Brady. Jesse, would you like to <laughs> take it away? Basically what happened was this was my first impression of these text messages. I had read the bullet point one where he was like demanding that she doesn't model or like be friends with any girls that are unstable in that one. And I was like, this guy's a douche. But I had not read any of the other messages and I was blindly reacting to them. And in doing so, I had some takes that people were really upset with. I did ask at the end of the video, especially that I wanted you guys to help me understand what I wasn't understanding because I am open to that. And I and I want that to be clear. Like I am open to trying to understand a situation I obviously didn't get. And also it's important to note that when we started the show originally, I just want everyone to be aware that our original premise, like what I texted Jesse and was like, oh my God, let's start a podcast. We should do this. It was under the umbrella of like us reacting to things that maybe we did, well, uh, that we definitely didn't know much about because it was supposed to be kind of like, older out of touch influencers trying to keep up with like the TikTok drama and the stuff kids. and yeah exactly yeah. so that was going to be like kind of the shtick of the whole thing but then we both realized that we're so chronically online that like there weren't <laughs> many things we didn't know anything about so that didn't really work but one of our favorite things to do is to like one of us brings the topic and then the other one reacts to it in addition we also never planned to have the show cover like dark things. It was always supposed to be pretty like lighthearted, stupid drama, but there's been a lot that has happened the last year and it's been a little hard to avoid and it's what everyone's talking about. And I think we have wanted to contribute to a lot of the conversations because they are important. But I think yesterday was the, one of the first times that we had a situation where I didn't know a ton about it going into it, but I'd read a lot of the texts and already formed my opinion. And Jesse hadn't really seen a lot of it. So a lot of it's just her processing it in real time. And like, I feel like we had like a back and forth the entire time. We we're like discussing it a lot. Well, and I kind of called it when we were talking about it, where I was like, I feel like people are going to get upset because I'm not like a thousand percent here or there. I'm kind of just trying to understand what's going on. But I don't think I could have foreseen like how frustrated people got with me. I don't know personally from this situation where I want to go from it. And what I mean by that is like, do I want to continue this kind of like, not candidness, I don't want to say that word because it's not like I'm not going to be candid on here, but like maybe just when it's like a darker situation, like we both really well research it before, you know, so that we don't get into these types of situations. There's some deciding to do with how we want to move forward from here because it was a shit show. And by the way, if you're like, if you didn't see last episode, I was not on Jonah Hill's side at all, which is what's ironic. Like, I think he's an asshole. And what's very funny about this is that people called out that Ethan Klein had the same exact take, basically. Like, his first take was like, why is this online? And people got really upset with him. So people were like, basically wondering if this was Ace Fest part two, if I'm just like doing the same take as Ethan. Full disclosure, I just saw Ethan's thing last night and we uploaded yesterday, like afternoon. So I had not seen the H3 episode where he talked about this. Basically, it was like, where is the boundary of seeing personal things. Like, what is the threshold? What do we have? Like, I feel like we're in a society where everything's made public. That's what he said. I'm not, I'm not saying it. That's what he said. But like, he, that's exactly what the sentiment that he was relaying was like, he was basically asking if it was a bad enough situation, not questioning at all that she went through something bad and that he was an asshole, but it was it bad enough to follow through with this kind of violation of privacy is what he called it. I think that's what my brain was going through and was interesting and a lot of people brought to light was like, well, what about your situation? You were leaking DMs, you were leaking text messages and emails. And I kind of saw that coming, but like, I was like, Okay, but I actually said in our last episode that like, I understand when people are doing something to put a stop to behavior that's currently affecting their life or other people's lives, like imminently, right? Like they need to put a stop to it by alerting people of like, this is a dangerous person and this is why. It's actually interesting because I did see some people responding of like, what did prompt it? Cause that was a, your biggest question is like, why did she suddenly release these? She said she waited till after his um, current girl had the baby, but like, why now? And 
I had said, I was like, I was kind of like compartmentalized. Like, uh, I didn't really care why they were out. I was just reading what they were and reacting to what they were because they are out. So <laughs> just because maybe some people think that she shouldn't have released them doesn't change the fact that he did it. And now we know he did it. But I want to say the reason why I was saying that is not because I actually care so much about like why she put them out and like I demand an answer from her. It more so was just a human reaction because I felt a little bit icky reading a lot of them where I was like, it felt like I'm not <laughs> like I'm not supposed to be in this conversation. Well, yeah. And Dan from H3 even said he was like opening up about his emotional abuse and all that stuff. And he was like, but I have to say, when I first read them, I thought this is none of my business. Like that was my reaction. This is none of my business. Why am I reading this? It wasn't an immediate like, oh, I totally understand why she's putting this out there because this person is actively trying to ruin her or harass her or whatever. He's still being a danger to everyone around him, which I'm not saying he's even not, but I was confused. And I guess my issue is like, I understand now because I've seen the context that I was missing last episode. But what is a little bit like, it's hard for me to understand is like thought processes, like we're not as a society, like okay with people like having them. <laughs> like, it's just like, I was just trying to understand and I'm not like getting on anybody's ass who was just trying to inform me like at all. And I'm not trying to get on anyone's ass period. But I feel like I'm like, Yo, I was just trying to think. I was trying to understand. And people are like, how you dare were throwing you? out I'm like, oh my necessarily God. concrete opinions. You were just like talking through it. And it's it was a conversation between us and we were having a back and forth. It's a conversation I would have had with you on FaceTime trying to understand what happened. I wasn't trying to in any way. And if I did, I'm genuinely sorry to hurt Sarah Brady, to lessen her case, you know, like against this fucking man who obviously hurt her. Like that was not my intention at all. And if I contributed, you know, you said something interesting to me when we were on the phone before this, where you were like, I think that it's not so much about what you said, but it kind of like emboldens people who are worse than that to be be open about their hatred towards Sarah and like other people. Or like it was her. people interpreting your kind of confusion around the context of the whole situation. They were taking that for dismissing what Sarah Brady had put out. As human beings, we're gonna have thoughts. They evolve given any context and mine has evolved, full disclosure. It has evolved. It was interesting is when I was watching the Ethan Klein video or the, the episode, he actually, the first thing he even pulled up was her first frame on Instagram, which we did not react to, of course. And what it says is it's a black screen and she's talking about how it is more of a mental burden on her to withhold this information than to put it out there. And I, I'm being, I'm not like trying to just say this to like make people happy. If I had seen that one Instagram story, everything would have changed. Like personally, because I understand that. There was a lot of the like notes that she would put and like random ass order of text messages. Perfect example is like that one text message that, that's like your words, not mine. And I'm like, why am I reading that? I don't get it. Like there was just so much things that I'm like, I don't understand. What hurt is that there was people comparing my abuse to her abuse. I don't think that's fair. Not because what she went through wasn't bad or what I went through, any any like comparison to that. It's that victims of abuse still have opinions of life. <laughs> like we get to like, we don't have to be one way or another according to how you feel we should react to certain situations. Like, yes, I stand with victims and I'm always like more inclined to believe if there's even a shred of evidence. I'm like, I understand that people don't just get things out of coming out about abuse. I know that. but. I also have opinions about nuanced situations that surround abuse as well. I don't think my opinion was great or on the nose last episode. I'm not standing by it, but like, I just, I don't like that comparison because I feel like it puts all abuse victims in this box. It's Again, like, like I said, we hadn't covered like such a serious thing, I guess, without both of us being more fully aware. So maybe we should have researched a little more further. Listen, if it's not appropriate surrounding a situation that shouldn't be like a process of me, not shooting the shit, but like just trying to understand, then that's not how we're gonna address things moving forward. Like again, if it's a more serious situation, we will have all the context and that won't happen again. And I'll just leave my candidness and like first impressions to silly things that don't really cause damage if we get it wrong. My point earlier with like, uh, this podcast has definitely evolved a lot since the beginning with the original plan of like not planning to know anything and just like blindly reacting to coming and being more informed about certain things or some of it we kind of react as we figure it out. And I think for moving forward for these more nuanced situations, situations, then we will spend a little more time. But the point of the podcast, what I'm getting at is we never plan on it being like an informative, here's the news and here's everything. And it's very much- But not to sound like deaf noodles. No, 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 no,
podcast, not a fact-based podcast. Like, it's us figuring it out as we go. Also, yes, this does go out to a lot of people, but it is just like me and a friend talking. And a lot of times, sometimes that creates this a little bit too loose of a dynamic where I'm a little bit too like... and. Like in real life, if this discussion happened, let's say it's me, you, and a person who has the opinion of a lot of people from last episode, it would just be this discussion of someone being like, yo, actually, I don't think you saw this that she put out. And then I would see it and I'll be like, oh damn, I didn't know that. And that would like really be it. But because of the nature of how this is, it, it caused a lot more of an uproar than I had intended. And you know, all I can say is that definitely are bad for the research part of it for sure because if I had researched into this and seen the majority of it and what, what really kills me is that it later came out that he has like essay allegations against him but he's not a good person and I didn't think he was a good person last episode and I didn't doubt that she had experienced abuse and to the people who were like she doesn't owe you like a reason I never thought she did you know what I mean like it wasn't it was me, more like, you're just curious well, why doesn't she tell me why reason. she did it yeah I literally was just wondering and for that, I was wrong. You had mentioned last episode, but it was like very brief and in passing about that therapy documentary, but I actually think it's a lot more relevant than we let on last episode. Actually, one of the comments I saw, because we had asked like, if anyone knows what the like catalyst for all of this was, like, please let us know. And I don't know if this is true, but someone did say, it was after she saw that that documentary came out and it's him praising his amazing therapist where again, people have said that it's like, maybe they crossed some boundaries because it's more of a friend situation. Like ethically, it was weird. But it's that it's showing, he's like portraying himself as this evolved man of who's been going to therapy and has learned so much about himself. But then his actual behavior reflects that he clearly if does I not understand. If I had known that, Part of it, like you had said, oh, it, it showed that they were, he was too close to his therapist. And that wasn't relevant to me at all about this. But if I had known that, I shit you not, and I'm not just saying this, I would absolutely understand how her being hurt by him. And also there was multiple text messages we didn't even react to where it was her telling a friend, like his therapist used to like tell her to like swim away from guys and stuff, like really bizarre shit. I absolutely would have understood right then and there why she felt the need to come out. And I understand that like, I'm not the keeper of the internet. It's not up to me who gets to say what and how they get to say it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that this is a show where we talk about our thoughts and my thought was questioning why was this, I, I don't understand why this was made public. If I had seen that, I would have been like, oh, totally. Totally I understand how the fuck she would feel and be like, excuse me, sir? Like, you're this perfect person who's gone to therapy and you're so cured. And I think he's even been quoted, well, Ethan said this, don't take my word for it. But Ethan said that like, he's been quoted being like, that he's a feminist and like, you know, all that, that bullshit. And that's the fuck whole thing. That. So it's like, he's been portraying himself as this evolved man of the new progressive movement and he's supporting women and it's like, actually you said she had to delete pictures where she's barely even wearing a bathing suit. What are you talking about? Right then and there, it would have just been a different episode. And for that, I put it on, on me specifically. I should have done my own research going into it before having that opinion. And you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't really have much more to say other than I am a person that when again, presented information and more than happy to change my mind on something. But the fact that I like disappointed or hurt people in like that thought process that part is troubling to me and I'm like I need to figure out how to not do that in the future because that's not what I want to do here. I think we will just approach these kind of topics a little more delicately moving forward and we apologize for any upset that it caused. And also, like you said, when we're talking, like it very much, I know we always joke about like, especially guys that will say things on podcasts. And I'm like, do you remember yeah. you're filming a podcast? What are you doing? Uh, us. And <laughs> me. That, you know, <laughs> well, when we're filming it very much, it does feel like a conversation. Our conversations, like, yes, they might be a little more candid on just our FaceTime, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. And if I had thought that you were like being like super victim, -y, like victim shaming and stuff, I would have pushed back even more. But even so, I feel like it was a discussion and me explaining things and you were just processing it in real time. It just wasn't the place or time for me to kind of explore the situation in the way that I did. There are certain situations where it just doesn't matter if I do that. And I, people probably like that with other situations where I'm just trying to like, oh, what the fuck is going on here? And that wasn't one where it was appropriate to do so. And that's okay. And like, I think that it's a pivotal part of us framing the show, like just figuring out again, how to move forward. Hopefully we don't have to cover so many dark topics in the future, but I was gonna say, we this will. never the plan, we didn't I want know, to. But we will, and that's okay. And now 
we have a better understanding of how to approach them. Honestly, uh, I'd like to move on to making fun of James Charles, but we, you know, that was just, it was just very important. Like it's been like heavy on my fucking heart. Last night I had a lump in my asshole, bitch. Like I was literally so <laughs> stressed. I was like, I did it. I fucked up everything. Like I just was so stressed. So honestly, I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I, I take it very seriously when a very large portion of you are telling me that I fucked up. Um, hello guys. So we, we took a quick break, aka two days when did yeah, i was like when did we film i don't what day is it i two days completely ago. lost track of the days yeah well you guys are watching this a day late actually and if you're wondering why it's because we already recorded this and this is future us you were just watching past us um having to re-record because my audio was being a little bitch and this cable just decided to levitate out and half of my audio was just us like me crackling so i told everyone on twitter last night because that's all my Twitter account is, is just <laughs> podcast updates. Do know them updates? <laughs> and um, Janet tweets. I got responses from some people that weren't uh, thrilled. Then just some people that were trying to like offer suggestions about like, maybe you should do a tech test before you shoot. You guys. That wouldn't even help. We're not like coming in here and just being like, woohoo. <laughs> like everything is tested beforehand. We filmed for 20 minutes and then exactly. it Exactly. If you can see, we already included like the first part of the episode because that part worked. And then randomly, my, I guess one time when I got up to like re-record or something, this literally just came loose. I don't fucking know how because I don't even move my microphone. I walk around it. Yeah, but anyway, shall we redo what we did? I don't remember what we talked about anyway. So it'll be like a fresh oh, time. we talked about James Charles. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and the article that came out. So yeah, let's just do that again because I'd love talking about James Oh my Charles. God. Well, honestly, I think uh, half of it, I ended up talking about more being so confused by the author of this article that we're going to talk about than James right. Charles himself because his behavior, I feel like, is kind of expected at this point. Honestly, I would say I'm not surprised, but I am a little surprised at his audacity like just to speak on the matter and then in the way that he does it I'm like interesting I don't know though especially after seeing like what Colleen did it's like it Yo, seems oh, it's not like, that level of audacity <laughs> no it's not but like they all have this level of audacity that I'm like I could never yeah no seriously like complete lack of self-awareness um but basically someone covered seemingly randomly like it's like what prompted this interview it was because his makeup line is coming out Painted. Oh, right, right, right. Painted. So he needed good press. I don't know if that's exactly what this was. I guess like, you know, when people are releasing something and they go on little PR tours. tours and they get, yeah. yeah, exactly. He did that. But of course, when he's being interviewed, the shit that he's done is good, like being brought up. So he has to, drive. like, he can't just sit down and do an interview about his makeup line. It's just well, not going to happen. I honestly, he basically could have, I feel like, with the author of this article. Sorry, guys, I'm not like True. just on my phone. I'm trying to pull up the article. <laughs> the title to this Cosmopolitan article, and uh, Cosmo is not like, it's not like Time Magazine, but it's also not like Daily, Daily Mail. Mail. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like it's relatively reputable. I mean, I feel like Cosmopolitan doesn't really do like think pieces, though. It's more like six ways to put a dildo in your ass or something. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Okay. <laughs> so for this, they titled the article, James Charles would like to be uncancelled, please. Um, let me think about it. No. <laughs> also, I just got like a flashback to Amanda Bynes. Oh, like, Amanda, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. AmandaPlease.com. And mm -hmm. she would... Oh, Penel... Oh, my God. So many memories just came flooding back. Yeah. Anyway, back to James Charles. So the secondary headline of this is... More than two years after, allegations of sexual impropriety sent the superstar beauty YouTuber into influencer purgatory. He's hoping to relaunch himself and his brand with the help of a new makeup line. If you want to, like, refresh your brand, which in my eyes, his brand is speaking to minors inappropriately. Like, if that's what you want to do, perhaps don't do an entire interview being like, I want to be uncanceled. Maybe just sit down and talk about your makeup line and then try your best to, like, move past what happened. But, like, if you keep addressing it and then, as we're going to see, like, be an asshole as you're addressing it, it's not going to go away. Well, also, you don't get to address it and be like, yeah, I fucked up, but then be like, no, we can't talk about how I fucked up. <laughs> I use the term fucked up because that is what he uses in this article and the F word is used in this article so many times. It continues, uh, there's the last sentence of the secondary headline says, in a wide ranging interview with Cosmopolitan, Charles talks about fucking up and trying to move on. Okay, interesting choice, but um, cool. <laughs> 
oh my god. Like, literally, this is the opening of the article. I'll just read you the first two paragraphs. It is the year of our internet, 2023, and the as surely as the sun internet? rises... I literally, this is ridiculous. Are you 90 years old? As surely as the sun rises, an internet celebrity has an apology to make. So they're trying to, like, make this tongue-in-cheek already. But <laughs> she goes, so here I am sitting in James Charles in Sino Mansion, like a pop culture priest ready to take his confession. <laughs> you didn't read that last time. I know. <laughs> this is me processing it right now. <laughs> then she goes, let us begin. And then it's quotes because of course now we're on to what James is saying. And he goes, I don't want to sit here and fucking mope and whine and cry because nobody wants to hear it, says Charles. Yes, James, Can you read it correct. in his voice for me? I don't even know how. I... I don't have any mashed potatoes. I don't want to shit here, mope. And shit here, and shit here. I, uh, we said this in the last episode. He always, to me, sounds like he has a mouthful of mashed potatoes. Sinking into a plush couch in his casual open living room. Quote, I had to do a lot of thinking. Like, okay, babe, this is your fault. No, you're not a pedophile. No, you're not a fucking groomer. No, you're not a predator. But you made a big mistake. Colleen? <laughs> just kidding. Literally, I'm like, the only reason I feel like uh, even actually, even at some point later in the article, he brings up the term groomer again and says that it's this overused word now and that like because of politics and stuff. And I'm like, do you what? I really wish that our show had the uh, sound effects, like if we had a sound effect person, because I would love that part of Colleen's song. I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser. I'm not a groomer. Just a loser. The only grooming I've done is my two Persian cats. Well, no, but literally, like, before the Colleen thing, I don't feel like the word groomer was being thrown around. It's not like it's narcissistic not like abuser or gaslighter yeah, or something. Exactly. Like, gaslighting, manipulating. Oh, she's a narcissist and a rat. Not the groomers talking about, like, grooming is overused. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm like, oh. Well, is it though? I feel like it was very appropriate in this scenario. Yeah. What pisses me off about James is he has, like we've seen with a lot of people, he has stepped back so many times after taking a few steps forward. Like he has actually sat on camera and addressed like verbatim, he has said to the victims. Like he has referred to them as victims of his actions. To the victims, I am so, so sorry. And I promise that something like this will never, ever happen again. Then he's taken down that video, re-uploaded a Get Ready With Me where he's doing his makeup while he says there are no victims. Then he took that video down. But that's like all besides the point. Like he's literally, make up your mind. Well, that's You know that yes, what you did is a mistake, but it wasn't just a mistake that you can call a mistake. Like it was so fucked up. Well, and there's, there was reasons that you got to that mistake that you haven't addressed and you still don't seem to get in this interview which we'll get to but back to what i even said at the beginning when it says charles talks about fucking up and trying to move on but then he acts like he didn't fuck up but then he says he did but he doesn't say like according to james all he did that was a fuck up is that he like didn't check their ids i guess these conversations should have never happened point blank period there's no excuse for it there's no if ands or buts and i take full responsibility for that I trusted the information that was given to me rather than the information I could have and should have gotten myself. In both of these situations, doing research into these people's public social media profiles would have revealed their true ages and therefore these conversations would have never happened in the first place, but I didn't do the research. And that is what is so embarrassing. He always reduces it to that, but what you did, and here's the thing, if it happened to him one time, it would be bad. It would be bad. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's a lot easier to get past in terms of if like someone did lie to you and say like, I'm 18 and you believed them and then you continue whatever. And then you found out that they were a minor. That's one thing if it happens one time. But when you already knew that your actions were reckless. I did a lot of thinking and reflecting to really try and figure out why I was actually allowing myself to be so reckless in the first place. And you needed to like slow down and not first of all use instagram as a dating site when you're a mega fucking that's internet the, celebrity that's my key takeaway here i'm like why are you what are you doing it sucks and it is ridiculously embarrassing to admit this but i think i have to and that is that i'm desperate he's just desperate <laughs> but like literally it, that his disregard for the like um, for that, wait, what's the word that I'm looking for? I know we say power for dynamic the, a lot, but his disregard for like, even that, like he's, he's going after like his fans. His disregard <laughs> for like the seriousness of what he did. 
Yeah, that's the thing is like, once you do it, I don't know, I just feel like he did not take it seriously, which is why he reoffended and then did the same thing. And yes, there are people I want to acknowledge that fake it or like bait him. And I, I don't think that's right. There's people that like literally yeah. bait him to message them and then they leak the messages on TikTok. And then there's people like Deaf Noodles who cover like the fake people who are literally faking messages by James. So there is a lot of like muddied water there. And there are probably people out there who believe he's talked to like 16 plus minors, which isn't the truth. Agreed, agreed. But then he does do this whole like Instagram dating thing. Also the, the screenshots we've seen are like him very much. And he says in one of his apology videos that's been taken down that he was desperate. And it's like, yeah, we could see that because he's literally like sending ass pics after they've been talking for like two seconds. And I'm like, and requesting armpit hair pictures and saying like, hey, do you have a big dick? Like that's part of my boyfriend it's application. Like, okay, it's maybe, like, okay, maybe. <laughs> you know right? this is like, gonna end up on TikTok. Maybe them first. Like, I, I don't know, crazy idea. <laughs> and mind you, that's after his whole scandal. Like, I'm not even joking. If I were him and two times I've been in situations that were publicized and whatever, I don't care how desperate I am. Unless I meet you in motherfucking person. I, that's the thing. It's and happen. I don't understand because at one point, I'll find it where he talks about why he doesn't use dating apps. Oh, wait, actually, should we get to the point of where this author lies in their James Charles lore? Because I couldn't believe I was reading this. I'm like, then why did you write the article? She goes, as a very online millennial, I had long been ambiently aware of Charles while also knowing next to nothing about him. The influencer's platonic ideal. I don't even, what, you're just saying words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does say a lot of words. Bored at home during the pandemic, I watched the Dramageddon feud he had with another YouTuber whose name I can never remember. A hilariously non-scandal scandal that possibly had something to do with hair vitamins? <laughs> Ma'am, why are you writing this article? <laughs> Literally, I that is the funniest way to describe Dramageddon because it was the shit show of the internet. Like, it literally was the dawn of drama channels and everything because of the fucking insanity of it all. And for her to be like, something about hair vitamins, I think. For her to be like, I, of that other YouTuber whose name I can't even remember, are you... What? How dare you reduce this Tati to Westbrook? sugar bear hair fucking <laughs> vitamins when Tati has so many iconic quotes from her videos, sucking dick and cock. It's just like, no big deal. Like sucking dick and cock. Like I'm just like, oh my God, time and place. And you did it at my birthday dinner. And you did it at my birthday party. And you're gonna say that this is all about hair vitamins. There was so many iconic moments in Drama Gun and you are foul for that. I just, and then, well, and then she goes on to, anecdotally, it seems like everyone in my life, which doesn't help us because you don't know anything about him. So why just would anyone in your life? the Cosmopolitan office. Literally. <laughs> Anecdotally, it seems like everyone in my life under the age of 25 considers Charles an internet celebrity. And no one over 45 has ever heard of him, unless they have kids. Those in the former group know that he's been famous since his teen years, although his storylines, so to speak, are all self-produced. I Literally, what is this even saying? Like, none of this makes any sense. His storylines? What storylines? Honestly, I think what got me the most was the YouTuber whose name I can't even remember. I, like, literally, they probably reached out to Tati for comment, and she didn't respond, and that's why they're, like, shading her. Because that is so... I, I can't. Oh, and then also she says, And because of a hungry and fickle internet that doles out for forgiveness or maybe just forgetfulness seemingly at whim it's a landscape hellscape some would say in which all comebacks are tentative and where the conversation around an offense often ends up obscuring the offense itself like this article like literally that's what you're doing here is being like we don't even know why he was canceled but here he is <laughs> she then continues when i pulled friends and colleagues about charles in the run-up to this day the general consensus was that he had done something bad but no one was clear on exactly what. Bullshit. Bullshit. Like, unless you what literally you have mean? not been why here. why are you interviewing him if none of you know who he is? I don't believe that for a second. I really just don't. And especially because you know that this article is a PR thing that came from promoting his brand. It wasn't like they reached out to James Charles. James Charles' people reached out to them. I'm wondering, like, what motive do they have to cover him in this light? It's so weird. Because no one's interviewed him in how long. Like, it's a good get, but... 
at the same time, like maybe do your research first. Well, that's the thing. And like literally this goes through so many teams of people and their only job is to fact check everything. And how does all this shit get through? Like it's literally so weird. Where to go next? The whole article is so all over the place that it's hard to even know where to go. Um, There is a point though that he talks about the brand he's coming out with, Painted, which I have to ask you, have you seen the like little teaser video for it where he's like literally painting? No, no, I have not. It's him literally painting with paint. I know it's a makeup line because I know who James Charles is, but like, isn't that kind of a weird way to promote a makeup line? To he's always kind of done makeup? that too. Like when he did the Morphe artistry palette, it was very much like showing, I think some sort of painting going on I think he's just trying to like hone in on the like artistic aspect of it but what I do find interesting because I know that he was trying to decide on a name and he ended up on painted obviously but he was talking about how he could not he was asking people for suggestions on what he should name the brand and he said I cannot name it something with my name in it so nothing that has James Charles in it I was like oh interesting <laughs> why you don't, you don't think people would buy it he is in the original video but like even like the promo shots around it he's not in it's like a model with interesting. actual paint on her face. Yeah. So that is very convenient and interesting. Or maybe he's just trying to pull like a Patrick star and do one size beauty type of thing. But Patrick is still very much like the face of all of it. He is. Yeah. But if you just walk into a Sephora, you're not going to know that's Patrick star's brand. Like it's one size. It's no, not called his no, name. Yeah. It doesn't say, well, actually I think it is one size by Patrick star. Like this is just painted, like not painted by James Charles. Yeah. Like I feel like he's very much trying to veer away from it being attached mm -hmm. to him, but it's also interesting because apparently it's a solo venture that's been four years in the making, which I have to imagine, like, wasn't he originally going to do like a line with Morphe or something? Probably, because I know that Morphe had something to do with the funding of Jaclyn Hill's brand. Even though she referred to it as like a family business. <laughs> yes, because she's... Jacqueline Hill. I am almost positive that James Charles was in talks with Morphe about like having them as investors. I felt like he had something like in the works and then all of his shit went down and then they pulled out. Yeah, for sure. Well, and went out of business, didn't they? They're still at Ulta, which is so weird. Like I just walked in the other day and I'm like, oh, Morphe's still here and coming out with new stuff. Yeah, because they have Ultas in Target now. And I saw it. I went to a Target the other day, guys. That was the most amazing place I'd ever been in my entire life. I wanted to move in. It was a big one. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, I was like, you didn't specify why. <laughs> it's just like, I just yeah, went to a Target. I mean, in, in general, I do love Target. But specifically, I loved it because the Ultas in the Targets in LA, all of the makeup is all locked up. So to see any of it or like take any of it out, you have to have them like unlock the case. What? It's very, all the laundry detergent too. Oh, interesting. Well, the thing is too, is I know that Morphe went they didn't go out of business. They were bankrupt, which is not necessarily going out of business, right? Like they filed for bankruptcy. I know that that's like a tactic that I feel like businesses do to get around say, things. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a big business person as you might imagine, but interesting segue because James claims that this line is fully self-funded. Every single dollar that has gone into the brand has been for my personal savings and checking accounts. I have no investors, no partners, no billion dollar backers behind me. So two parts to that is one, I think that's because they pulled out. And two, I don't know much about business, but I know that you're not supposed to like go all in with all of your own money. That was something interesting that I did learn is that like rich people all get loans for things. They don't buy they things They never put their own money into it. That's like, because that's too risky. Well, <laughs> just his life savings is like... That's the thing. I'm like, James, what do you mean you put all of your money into this? Like, why? This is so... That's so stupid. Maybe he... Again, maybe he had to. Like, maybe nobody wanted because to Because no invest. one else would? Yeah. Yeah, then you don't start a makeup line. Which we did actually talk last time about... I looked up his YouTube views because you had asked, like, does he even still post videos and do people watch them and I had looked and he does upload like once or twice a month he's been uploading more frequently lately more than me <laughs> because painted is coming out but they still get like anywhere from like 500,000 on the low end to like over a million that's so a lot, it's not yeah. like he's not getting views but I think that's a lot different than buying a product that someone is putting out oh 100 percent like the percentage of people that would actually buy something from the ones that are watching that. Although he's doing pretty good on TikTok as well, which is proven to like drive sales, like especially with like TikTok shop and shit. So I don't doubt that he's gonna have sales. It's just kind of, it's a very risky project for sure. I'm just so not the person that's going to be buying it. Um, right. Because I am not a big makeup purchaser and then especially I'm not going to be buying James Charles makeup. But do you think as a makeup person, <laughs> even especially because he doesn't have investors and he doesn't have like a team of people helping him make this, like how are 
are the formulas being made? What, like, who's in charge? Oh, I'm sure he's working with a lab and he's talked about it. Like you work with a lab, then you work with a manufacturer who's going to mass produce like whatever it is that you're, there's like manufacturers that specialize in housing different makeup brands and they'll like, and they white you know, label everything. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't feel super confident in his ability to make those connections by himself. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure he's met a lot of people through the industry. Personally though, the reason why I would never, I mean, there's multiple reasons why I would never buy James Charles makeup, but I did buy his Morphe mm -hmm. palette and I personally like, I really did not like it. Like I thought the formulas were not great. Oh. I also really didn't appreciate the way that he reacted to, so there was like a pink pigment in there that was staining everybody's eyes. And do you know who brought that up? Who like started that whole thing? Cody Rance. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I just found that out the other day and I was like, what do you mean? I remember that whole saga, but like he was like actually like rude to Cody Rance and like just the way he addressed it. I don't like people like that who are like, you need to like read the fucking labels and like what it's like bro we're using an eyeshadow palette as intended and now my eyes are all fucking red that's how he reacts to everything though like i feel like he's had so many scandals that did not need to be scandals at all even when he um what it, didn't he like complain about the the it movie was that him <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. It's just like he'll tweet random things and he's so opinionated about things that don't matter. And it's like, why did you get involved in this? He also gets super petty with it. I remember one time I was responding. I cannot remember the scandal for the life of me, but I was responding to something that he did. Like very, it wasn't even bad, my response to him, but it was kind of like, mm. like it was just not very much for him, whatever. And then people started replying to me that were like for James Charles. And he was like liking all of them tweets i'm like sir that doesn't surprise me <laughs> like, at all. what the yeah. fuck well and i mean he was even the person that um went against adam originally right. when adam came out with all the i didn't stuff. see he that put in out real all time. these tweets he's like that kid's lying blah 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 and i'm like i uh, <laughs> did you apologize it's yet? <laughs> very interesting that him and colleen stick together <laughs> But what I will say is like, there is, he's just very petty. Like he uh, has been responding to everything since the dawn of time. You would think though, that you would learn after a few times of that going south. Maybe you shouldn't do that anymore. But um, he clearly doesn't learn from his mistakes because also let me scroll and find the part of yeah, the article where he talks about Instagram and dating apps. Which his only right response here would be like, absolutely like I've learned and do not use Instagram as a dating app at all. But it's James Charles. <laughs> He's desperate, sister. I'm desperate. Generally, if that <laughs> happened to you, like I don't care who you are, if that happened to you, wouldn't that Scar like, you. Obviously, that would be a response. Yeah. You'd be like, no, I'm never doing that again. He literally is still doing it. <laughs> and admitting to it and defending it. He's like, it. Well, maybe next time it'll work out. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, no, no. I still can't believe this person was like, I don't know anything about James Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Talks about his Ebola thing. Oh, that wow, was fun that times. I about. Yep. What did he say? What was the tweet? Like, I'm going to Africa. I hope I don't get Ebola. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, uh, someone take James Charles Twitter away. Like, just take it away. Just get him off the internet. <laughs> Charles developed a reputation for a kind of over-the-top thirstiness, a quality that could be interpreted as refreshingly candid by who? Wait, what? <laughs> or slightly cringe, depending on who you ask. I think pretty much everyone is going to go with slightly cringe and not refreshingly <laughs> candid. Oh my God, I'm dying. I don't think they ever use Tati's name in this article. What? They just refer to her as like, this literally it's in parentheses and it says at least one rival it should be said interpreted it differently his dramageddon opponent not like, opponent to, his to say, nemesis to say Tati. <laughs> like i don't believe that you wrote this entire article and you don't know what her name yeah, is that bullshit may, do you think that he maybe requested that her name was, wasn't in it yes oh my gosh interesting i wish i like i don't know because like my personal experience in that industry um we didn't have these kind of big interviews so like i don't know how it works like behind the scenes, but I find it very strange that they're avoiding saying her name so blatantly. Yeah, the opponent. <laughs> his drama get an opponent initially accused Charles of using his fame to manipulate, and it says manipulate in quotes, straight men. Oh. I'm like, well, but wasn't he doing that? <laughs> True to influencer form, she retracted the claim and apologized a year later. Did, did she retract the claim? 
did she return? I don't know. I feel like that's actually up for debate. She put it all on um, Shane Dawson and, and Jeffrey. Yeah. And very much said, like, I was manipulated into making that and I have apologized and worked it out with James. So I feel like that's kind of a retraction. But I don't think she said, like, everything I said was bullshit. I even think she kind of stood by her making it and, like, her concern yeah. for James at the time. I don't know. I don't, and then it says, yet all the drama seemed to ultimately earn him one thing, more followers. Mm, I would say it earned him more than followers and uh, now a reputation that is completely... How are you going to say that when James Charles is literally the reason why Social Blade doesn't do like live subscriber counts anymore? Because people would have like watch parties of his subscribers just dropping and dropping and dropping. And now we can't even see that. Thanks a lot, James Charles. Well, and not to mention like this whole thing is... The, the article is titled like th that he wants to be uncancelled. Like... If he wasn't, like, if you're just saying that all he got was followers, then it you're doesn't seem like he's really canceled. But uh, And the whole cancel thing is such bullshit. Like, James, you, you haven't stopped posting. You're still here. It's all good. Whatever. He was publicly accused of sending lewd photographs and inappropriate sexual messages to a then 16-year-old fan. Charles says he was misled into believing the boy was 18 and that he blocked him as soon as he learned the truth. And then in quotes it says, I've never been more disgusted in my life when I found out that kid was 16 years old. I was mortified. Absolutely mortified. The fan did not return Cosmo's request for comment. The allegation triggered more complaints against Charles. They were primarily disseminated in the form of TikToks filled with screenshots or flirtatious conversations Charles had allegedly conducted with a number of male fans, which that is implying that some of them were not real, which not all of them were. But yeah. this also is kind of making it seem like all of them weren't real. Except for one. And I don't feel like that. There's at least two that he's yeah. admitted to. Other claims, including an incident in which Charles allegedly called someone daddy, felt muddier. Yeah, maybe don't call random people you don't know daddy and send them ass pics. Or ask for their armpit hair like, pictures. I, that is <laughs> my main takeaway here is like, how could you think that that was like a productive it's way to get into the dating world when it only went so badly for you? I'm... Desperate. That's the thing is like, it's one thing again to make the mistake. It's another thing to not learn from it and continue. And obviously we're going to read right now, still be doing it. It's a whole different world now. Like if you just had made the mistake and someone lied to you about their age, that's one thing. But then there's also like weird nuance to it where there's videos of James saying he's like really attracted to young looking people and not older people. That's why I'm like, I, I oh, find it funny to read it. Like I was disgusted. Absolutely disgusted. Like, what? I, mm, I think you were, you're probably he just is more attracted mad. to younger looking boys. So the thing is for me, I'm 21, but like I said, I have the mentality of a 40 year old. Yeah. So for me, like I'm much more mentally and emotionally mature than a lot of people my age. I'm not physically attracted to older guys, which sucks. Like I would date like the absolute youngest, like 18, 19, that looks a little bit older or yep. like 24 that like has a young personality. Okay. Like not like nine year olds, but like he likes people with like baby faces and stuff. And like personally, no, like at all. Like I want a beard. I want like a dad bod. Like that's what I'm attracted to. And I just feel like since that is what he's attracted to, that's even more of a reason for him not to use Instagram. Cause it's like, if they're young looking, stay away. Age is kind of hard to like, it's hard to discern how old someone is. Yeah. That's why maybe you use a fucking dating app where the age limit is that you're supposed to be above 18. So even right there, you have at least some deniability where it's like, they were supposed to be 18. Like I just assumed that they were following the rules, but no, because he doesn't like using dating apps. Oh my god, I can't. Okay. His biggest mistakes, he now thinks, were making himself too available and recklessly hitting on anyone he thought might be showing interest in him. You think? Yeah, yes. We can leave it at that. His intention was never to prey on minors. And honestly, I don't think James is a pedophile. Like, I don't think that that is the takeaway here. I think that he's very irresponsible and entitled in what he thinks he's entitled to like I feel like he thinks that it's like oh well I mean I'm famous so it's really hard for me to date so like I can go on Instagram and just like pick someone he tried to explain all of this in holding myself accountable but it just didn't come across right he reflects again this is an interview with Cosmo and in this one quote he says fuck twice but <laughs> I've been fucked over by so many men so many different times at this point I just want a fucking boyfriend somebody that's going to love me that's going to care for me so a lot of times I just 
go into talking to someone with rose-colored glasses. But you're talking to random people on Instagram that you don't necessarily know want to date you. I don't know if you saw this on Twitter, you probably did, but it has recently come out that his little brother does not speak to him anymore after all of these allegations came out. And to me, that is so telling. I'm like, if your own family cuts you off, they know you're fucking For two weird years, in that I guess they haven't talked. And like, they were really close too. Like, it yeah. wasn't like, oh, they were kind of always had a weird relationship. Like, no, I'm pretty sure they were very close. So then it, she goes, I still have to ask though, why didn't he just stick to actual adult dating apps? I have the same question. <laughs> He tells her that he previously had accounts on Raya, Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble. And while he did go on dates with people he met there, he ultimately felt too exposed. Like anyone he swiped right on was going to take screenshots of their conversations to brag to their friends about it. James, what, what happened on Instagram? I know, literally it's 20 million times more likely to happen on Instagram. At least if you were on a dating app, it would be like, oh, I knew that this was a dating scenario and not like you forcing yourself onto these people that don't want relationships with you and you think do. Then the next paragraph says, I know, you know, and he knows that Charles is on a mission to rehabilitate his reputation. But, and even though we've already established he's very good at his job, I have to tell you that his regret doesn't come across in person as the opportunistic artifice so many celebrities begrudgingly wade through. What the fuck is this article? The quote from this article that has like been the main one I think that has gone viral since, it's him saying, <laughs> Quickly, please name five famous male gay celebrities from the ages of 20 to 25. You can't because they don't exist. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> I love that. What? The reason I wouldn't be able to do it quickly isn't because they're, they don't exist. It's because I don't immediately think of them as being gay as like, that's the identity. So I'd have to kind of like take a minute to think about like, okay, well, who did they, who did they date? But the fact that James includes himself in that and says no one else exists, like he would not ever have been the person that I included on that list for someone else. That's so true. So like, if you meet the statistic, then there's way more than- Exactly. <laughs> like just go off YouTubers even. Like, are you kidding? We're not saying that you can only date celebrities. We're not saying that only famous people can have a conversation with you. Like just don't be dumb. The fact that he thinks he can only date famous people. I understand that as a famous person, it would be harder to date. And to navigate it. But yeah. also when your dating pool is your Instagram, that I think is not the right move because those are your fans. And that is when the power dynamic comes into play. I don't think everyone when James Charles would match with on a dating app, they might know who he is, but I think he could probably even find some people maybe that don't. Just because they know of you doesn't mean that number one, it's like an unfair dynamic just because they have heard of you before. It's just, it, he has no like awareness of the circumstances and the nuance that surrounds dating online. So I genuinely think he should just stay away from all of it. Cause it's like, you don't know how to navigate He doesn't it. seem to understand like the small talk portion of dating. Yeah, he just goes straight to armpit hair. And it's almost as if he thinks like, because he's famous, he doesn't have to do that step because like people already know who he is and it's like why would you send anything inappropriate to someone as a celebrity until you ask actually... anyone well i mean anyone yes but especially as a celebrity before you like knew them at all like even if it was just this protocol of a little bit of small talk then you facetime like once or twice get a vibe for them and then proceed with your ass pics don't go straight into it or if you want to go straight into it i'm not even like necessarily shaming him for that if it's between adults whatever but then don't get mad when it gets leads because it's probably going to get leads. i'm not shaming him for like if other people want to re reciprocate and do that sure have at it but that doesn't seem to be the case because every it's time like he's done it, it's gotten exposed afterwards. So it's like, maybe you don't go that route then. Yeah, and no matter how desperate you are, just take a little bit more time to just navigate a situation properly. That's it. It's not like asking for something impossible. But that's the thing is he's acting, like he throws his hands up being like, this is just like, I I I'm never gonna find anyone. And it's like, well, yeah, when, when you're going off the explore page on Instagram, I wouldn't think I would find a boyfriend either. Like, And honestly, I kind of find it interesting 
interesting uh, as far as like his character goes that it's so hard for him to find a partner because he's a good looking, successful, rich man. Well, maybe it's because he tells everyone that. But there's some people that wouldn't give a fuck and would go for it. It's like, literally, why is it so hard for James Charles to find a boyfriend? I don't get it. Well, I mean, if they Google him, I get it. But I'm just like, in general. What I felt was the cringiest is that he literally has, there's, we've seen screenshots of him like listing why he would be a good boyfriend. And I'm like, mm, maybe you let your personality speak for itself instead of being like, I'm such a hot commodity. <laughs> this made me remember um, his little TikTok like boyfriend application thing. Yep. The fact that he did that after his scandals is so befuddling. It says he's more cautious now, although not so much that he's given up on the DM sliding completely. Why? Why don't you just give up on that? Well, it, it hasn't worked. It's been the reason you've gotten quote unquote canceled. So why wouldn't you just stop that? Literally that logic makes no sense to me. Instead though, he's started requiring potential romantic interest to provide IDs. He really does think that's the, that's he, the issue. Literally, he does. It's like, okay, so you're going to ask for ID. They're going to give it to you. You're going to be like, okay, they're over 18. Let me send an aspect. Tomorrow it's on TikTok. Then you get mad. It's like, Genuinely, okay, well, I'm like, I mean, it doesn't shit. even matter their age. They're, they could still be exposing you. Oh my God. He literally says, I'm a club bouncer at this point. Oh my God. He's the, yeah, yeah James, I don't like know he, what you He very much is like, I'm the victim in this scenario. And it's like, no, just don't. No, like, oh my God. And he even says at one point, he does ask for IDs and that like someone had even Photoshopped their ID, like trying to trick him. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. Well, the thing is, again, it isn't that you made a mistake. It's that the mistake became your repeated behaviors that you are still participating in. And what do you want people to do with that? Just ignore it? Like, it just is what it is. You haven't changed your behavior to adjust things. So what do you want us to do about it? Nobody's saying you don't deserve to live life, but also you have to acknowledge that your job and everything you've achieved is an extreme privilege that you're not entitled to keep for the rest of your life. Like it comes with the responsibility. You navigate your behavior accordingly. And if you don't, so be it. Like, I just can't with this victim shit when it's like, you're rich. She's in your Encino mansion. I mean, that was interesting. I feel like he doesn't get it. And I don't think he'll ever get it at this point. I feel like he just thinks the way he thinks about it and he's not willing to take any other input and change his mind. When you've been canceled, quote unquote canceled, for like the third time regarding the same kind of scenario, maybe don't do an interview where you're kind of acting like you didn't do anything wrong, except not check IDs. Anyway, well, we do have one last tiny topic that Lily wanted to bring up. It is one of our favorite things that we have talked about in the past, so it felt wrong to not revisit. Do we know them? Poot Lovato. We do. Well, Jesse actually knew her. I didn't know. No, I never met Pooh. I only met Oh, Demi. sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So actually this whole thing, it's its really stupid and it's pretty short, but it kind of blew my mind because we've talked about the Poot Lovato meme in the past. And I have always been under the impression that Poot Lovato, like, yes, there was like made up lore around it. It was like, she lives in her basement. It's like her twin or something. It's stupid shit like that. But did you know that the picture of Pooh was Photoshopped? Yeah. I didn't, I thought it was just like a weird angle slash like weird exposure on the picture. I didn't know that it had been like actually altered. You know what? Actually, now that you say that, I don't know if my first impression of it was that it was photoshopped. I might have I think just that, that was our takeaway that was is that why we thought it was like, cause she got, she has never been a fan of the Poot Lovato meme and yeah. that we talked about that we thought that was kind of like, okay, like it's not that serious, but it's because she thought it was a real picture of her. And I'm like, it wasn't. Apparently it's been photoshopped. So she says in this recent interview she did with Harper's Bazaar, when Poot went viral, that actually sucked because I thought it was a real picture of me. And I was like, oh no, that's a really bad angle. But Poot was photoshopped. Later I felt better about it because I realized that wasn't my face. I get that, but also there's someone out there that looks like Poot Lovato reading that, like what the fuck? You know what I mean? She's like, I'm so happy that wasn't my face. But also like, I totally get why she thought it was her face. Cause like there are some pictures I see of myself. I'm like, ah, like I'm just like, that, does, for does sure, that for sure. I think what we've talked about in the past though, it's like no one thinks she actually looks like that isn't like that's Demi Lovato. Like the reason it became a meme is because it, it was looks, so weird. Yeah. And I just had like, here's the side by side and it isn't like that dramatic. It was still a weird picture to begin with, but they apparently it is Photoshopped. And I was like, 
Oh, wow. That's news to me. Oh, I see the side by side. So they basically just widened her face and like jaw, just her head in general. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like that's, you can't even really tell what they did because the original picture is weird. It's not even that weird. It's just kind of like overexposed and just, I don't know. That's funny. I've never seen the original picture. That's the thing. I was like, oh, there wasn't no, like, that's not the original. Like I, that totally blew my mind. Well, that's it. That's all we got for you guys this week. Uh, uh, sorry, we're a day late, but you know, just trying to make it happen over here one way or another. Thank you so much. If you made it to the end, we appreciate you. Um, yeah, and that's it. We will see you on Friday, hopefully. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs>